Right, so um, hello, I'm making this video because I've been getting quite a few messages in response to my shows um, basically asking me how to make a timeline show in quick show um, because the tutorial uh, on YouTube there's not really any tutorials up there and the ones that are up there aren't very detailed so I'll go through a bit of what I've learnt in my month or so of using quick show and make a little bit of a show and then I'll show you the results of what we make today so I've imported my audio now um, uh, this is Disturb and the Tweakers uh, the song is Anything, the 2021 edit and you'll notice that I have a WAV file here, not an MP3 and this is very important because if you're working with an MP3 it's very common that when you're working around you're you know, rewinding, fast forwarding a bit um, the audio goes out of sync with the cues so I discovered this pretty recently um, so if you have an MP3 file um, what you can do is you can use an audio editor like Audacity import the mp3 uh, import the mp3 file and then export it as a WAV file which is a pretty straightforward process um, I'm using also a brand the default workspace and you'll see here that with my projection zones I have the default projection zones as well and typically um, with with most shows that you're going to make you're going to want to delete all of these uh, zones and make your own ones from scratch but because i'm only programming for one projector here it's not really a big deal to just use this um, and what i'll typically do is i'll set all of my tracks to be projected to atmospheric effects which means that the cues that i see uh the cues that i make are going to look exactly the same when they come out of the projector so I'll, I'll import, uh, I'll use all of the tracks to output to atmospheric effects, I'll assign to all tracks. So you can see here that now all of the tracks I'm using will be going out to atmospheric events, uh, effects. So let's have a listen to, um, oh and sorry one more thing, uh, when you're setting up your show what's really important now is if you go to menu and then the show properties you're going to see here that we can show our measure time in seconds or BPM. Now you pretty much always want this to be in BPM and you want to set an accurate BPM. You can fill this out yourself if you are if you have some background in music or you're just good at counting the time. Um, but usually what's easiest for me is I just uh, Google the song and then I search like BPM. So I get can BPM for anything by the tweakers and this stuff. I see it's 155 and then I don't have to do any sort of guessing. Uh, I know it's 155. So you don't want to follow system BPM. Uh, you want to just follow this. So what's this going to do is that if I have cues that I set to be time synced. So if I have an effect on a cue and I want it to follow the beat, then it's always going to be uh, the beat is always going to be um, perfectly synced up if I put it in the timeline. Whereas if I'm working on inside the pages here, maybe my system BPM is not the same as the timeline BPM. Uh, then when I'm checking out my cues here, it's going to look like it's not synced up. Um, but then when I drag it in on my timeline, then it will be synced up. Okay. So let's listen to the first few seconds. So usually what I'm looking for when I start off a show is really repetitive sounds which I can make one sort of cue for that will repeat across the section. So we had the kick here, dun, 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 right? So I'm going to make a really simple cue to reflect that sort of kick. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a new page and I'll call it anything. So I'll just usually name my pages based on which show I'm using. Now what you can do is you can create a new shape or a parametric image or anything, right? But this is uh, a slightly poor, um, how do I say this? this? This is a trick that you usually discover early on when using Quickshow, is that if you go to the def uh, default workspace and you go to the cues that they've made, what you're gonna notice here is that this is called a synthesized image. Uh, image. And you don't have the option to create a new synthesi uh, synthesized image. Uh, but this is better than uh, a regular shape because what you can do with this synthesized image is you can uh, 
you can put in multiple shapes in a single synthesized image and those shapes can have their own individual effects and you can also place multiple shapes together so that the effects will uh, be applied to all of the shapes as well so synthesized image i pretty much always use them uh, so let's paste it in here and then i just make my cue here so what i'll do is i'll delete all the effects um, there is a shape effect here so i'm going to go edit shape and I'm going to delete these. So now I just have a regular shape. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to make a very, very simple cue. So let's say that I have, um, let's say I, I make this, uh, this uh, sheet expand on the beat. So I'm going to set the point count very low um, because it's a very simple cue. So I don't want to have, uh, use too many points. If your cues are, have too many points, then what's going to happen is uh, once you have lots of cues playing at once, and this is particularly a problem for single projector shows, um, what's going to happen is that projector isn't going to be able to keep up, keep up with drawing all the points, and you're going to get that really ugly flickering, and it's going to look horrible in person, it's going to look horrible on camera. So you always want to try to keep the points to a minimum. So I'm going to set this to like maybe 20 points. And then I'll have maybe, uh, I'll duplicate this item and then I'll make a shape that's the exact same, but with the beams instead. So I'll maybe set like five beams and I'll set the beam power to two. So the beam power is also very important. Um, <clears throat> usually I set the beam power to two because when I'm filming my shows, if I set the beam power too high, the hot beams are going to be too um, too bright and everything else is gonna not look very good because the color the the brightness balance will be off between the beams and the sheets so I usually try to keep the beam power very low <clears throat> okay so now that we have these two shapes what I'm gonna do is I want to make this shape expand on the beat so I want the same effect to be applied on both of my shapes so what I can do here is I can press right arrow here and right arrow on this shape and now they're both contained under the same container. And what this container lets me do is I can control the size, rotation, and the position. And it's going to affect all of the shapes. And what's even better is I can apply the effect. So let's make a simple oscillating effect, geometric. And I'm going to do size X. So I have, um, I have an effect that I want to trigger on every beat. So this is on metronome mode, which means that it's going to work based off the BPM, not off seconds. Um, so let's start this at zero and let's make it a decelerating effect. So it's a bit more impactful and this works just fine. So let's put this into the timeline and see how it syncs up. So drag it about here. Let's show it now to see. And you see there that like I did nothing on the timeline itself, but by following the principles of um, using the metronome effects, I have a cue that's already perfectly set. Okay, so there are a few different ways that you can um, sync your cues to the timeline. So another way that you can do this is um, let me delete this. I'm going to make a new queue and this time I'm not going to put the effect here. So I'm going to delete this effect. Okay. Now I'm going to drag this queue into our timeline. Let's drag it out to the same level. And then I'm going to use the effect tab here. Now the effect tab here is actually slightly different from, um, the effect, uh, the effects on this image, because now you have effects that will pertain to the length of this cue itself and you can see that with key effect right so if i do a key effect inside the cue itself so let me in introduce a key effect let's make a geometric size what i can do is i can tell it how what to do uh the actions to do during a beat or maybe during two beats or four beats but with um the key effect here let's say I go to um, size, uh, this duration, which I'm going to be drawing keyframes on, 
is actually based on the length of the queue, which makes it really easy for me to sync things up. So I can put this to start at zero, and then and then I can go to I'm gonna scroll over to here, which is when I want my um, my uh, shape to expand, right? And then now I'm going to set this to 100, and then I can press decelerate here, and that should have like a similar effect to before. Okay, so you can see here that it expanded just the same as my old queue. So in different scenarios, you're gonna want to use different um, sort of ways of controlling um, how your cues are gonna sync up with the audio. So usually when you have a really regular beat, it's it's easiest to just make the cue um, repeat the beat like that. Oh, I accidentally deleted half my audio. Oh no, I just scrolled to the end. Um, usually it's easiest to um, make the effect on the cue itself, but sometimes you can also use key effects, which are really useful when you have um, either really rapid beats, um, or sometimes it's easy to do with uh, stranger beats, which are a bit off sync or syncopated. Okay, so let's drag this in for now. Um, what I'm gonna do here is, I think that this position is not the greatest because uh, my camera will be looking at this angle basically. It's gonna be head on to the projector. And if my cue is beaming directly towards my camera, I'm not really gonna be able to see my cue. So I'm going to change the position. So I can change the position here, like this, with the X and Y sliders. I can also go to event effect and I can drag it like this, which might be a bit more intuitive, especially when you're working with more than one cue. But for now, I'll just set this to be at Y100, so it's at the top of the screen. Okay. So we have this kick here, and then we notice we have an extra kick here. So when you're when you're working, uh, when you're making a timeline show, it pays a lot to be very attentive to these small details. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to make a new queue, and then I will I will delete everything before. So I'll move this up, delete. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to make um, the same size shape, and but with beams, and then I'll set it to two beams, and then um, I'll paste it in the timeline here. And you can see the, the audio wave will tell you where to put the put the queue. So it's quite easy. And then I can put my existing queue back here. And then what I'm gonna do here is maybe I'll um, I'm gonna make the position up to 100 again. And I'll change the color maybe so it's white. Okay, so let's see how that looks. Okay, so now we can see that this perfectly syncs up with the extra kick and we're going to change this position to be 100 as well okay so now another thing that we can do is we can make this cue fade out so we can use the the fade slider here which will tell us when to begin fading out we can also change the rate of change. So if you go to event properties, um, you can go to rate of change. So linear is the basic, you know, it's gonna decrease the same, uh, decrease brightness uh, the, at the same sort of rate throughout all of this uh, shaded area. We can also make it accelerate or decelerate. So if you want it to be a bit more of a softer fade, you can use accelerate. Or if you wanna fade out a bit faster, typically you can use decelerate. Um, for this one, I'm going to just use uh, decelerate, so we can see how that looks now. Okay, so now it's a very minimal effect, but um, when you're making very detailed shows, uh, you do have to be quite um, selective with the effects that you put on your cues. Okay, so now we have uh, well, I want to say this is a, not really a beat synced sound, um, it's more of a unique sound. 
So what I like to do with um, with my cues is when I have this really regular sort of um, pattern of kicks or beats, then I'll have very simple cues. Now, when I have these um, these sounds that are that don't really have a beat to it, uh, I usually tend to include movements with my cue to sort of uh, portray this sound. So let's have a listen to the sound again. So we can see that there's sort of two parts to the sound. There's the sound, where, uh, so there's that sound, and then there's this second sound. So it goes down and then up, pretty much. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna make a new cue. And what I'm gonna do here is um, I could make my entire queue within this uh, this window, but what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna make a simple shape and I'm gonna manipulate it entirely using the effects tab over here. That way I can take advantage of the key effects. So what type of shape am I gonna make? I'm gonna make, uh, let's make it another sheet. Um, we'll make it like this. Let's actually make it the same sort of shape that we were using before. So we have a sheet with um, points inside of it. So let's have, uh, we had five points in the one before, so we'll use five points again. And maybe we'll just add some color to it. Uh, or actually I'll make that in the events, uh, the effects tab. So we're done with our cue for now. I'm gonna drag it out and paste it in here and make it the same length as it was before, as the sound here. So here I'm just checking that I'm putting in the right spot. Okay, so I can put this right here again, or I can actually just copy and paste this because I have the uh, event effects on it. So that way I don't have to redo my work. Okay, so that's that looks fine. So now I can start working on this uh, event. So it's good to make sure that your queue is actually the, the perfect duration and in the right spot before you start working on these effects. Because if you figure out that you put it in the wrong spots or it's too long or too short, then once you change the length of the cue, these key effects are gonna become unsynced with the audio. So it's very important to make sure that you're perfectly happy with where the cue is before you start working on it. Okay. So I'm going to work on this first part of the sound first. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna set the size to be um, let's say at 25 and then I'm gonna make it sort of fly in right so I'm gonna set this to come in from the top so let's say this comes in at 100 and it comes in at from the right let's say that halfway through this movement it comes down a bit so let's say that this comes to minus 100 and this comes down to let's put it at 275 so you can see it's sort of going downwards to the left and then maybe it comes to the middle okay so let's put this here and maybe it's going to come down a bit more okay so let's see how that looks now okay so we can already see that it's starting to shape up to be um, in sync with the sound so now with the size Oh, I don't know why that's here. So this should, sorry. So 25 at the beginning. And then let's say that when it comes out to this sound, the second part of the sound, this, that it's gonna expand and that's gonna give the, the wow sort of factor to the audience. So I can see here that my event effect, uh, my position effect is over here. So what I can do is I can include another size effect here. And I can edit from here as well to make sure that everything is in sync. So let's set the size to be, um, let's put it up to 200 now. So we can see here it goes really, really wide. So let's see how that looks. Um, oh, another thing to notice is that um, because this is the key effect, basically it's going to keep increasing in size until this event. So what I want to actually do is I'll make this a new key here and then I'll set this back to 25 so that way it's going to stay the same size all the way through and then suddenly it's going to jump let's zoom out a bit 
Okay, so we can see here that it's starting to shape up a bit. Now let's move this a bit ahead so that it's not as uh, it doesn't cut so hard. And what we can do here is we can set we can right click this key and set it to uh, decelerate. Okay, so that's a very basic sort of effect. It's not perfect, but it's pretty decent, I think. So we can set this so that the Q actually uh, slowly comes downwards as well. Okay, so now it really sort of captures the entire essence of the audio. So now the last thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to set a color effect to give it um, some difference between the kicks. So uh, I'm going to use a discrete color effect with white, uh, red and white, and set by x axis and how many repeats do I want? Uh, so you notice that the color effect doesn't look very good at the moment, and that's because the point count is very low for the sheet. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bump out, uh, bump up the point count. Okay, so it was only at two points before. I don't know why it was that low. Uh, so I'll set this back to forty. So let's try this again. Okay, so now it's looking a bit better, a bit more regular. So let's have a look at this snippet again. Okay, and what we can do finally just to finish up this pit bit of the show is I can actually just, uh, oops, I can fade this out here as well. Oh, sorry, this is really annoying. I always cannot click this on the first try and then make it fade out on the second sort of sound. Okay, so now that, I would say that, that reflects the, the audio pretty well. So that's a very quick tutorial on uh, some of the timeline features that are really going to help you um, sync the audio up with the music. Um, it's going to help you make uh, much more detailed shows instead of just having massive cues that span, you know, for half a minute and then you go to the next cue after half a minute. Uh, it's really fun to make cues that uh, really capture all the little tidbits in the music like this. So I hope you enjoyed this video and it helped you out in your programming.